Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here at First United Methodist Church of Baton Rouge for this week's preteen devotional. I'm Taylor, this is Joey, and we're excited to tell you the story of... Ah, that's right, Joey. We're not gonna tell them just yet because you're gonna have to find out. So I want to start this week with a little bit of a game for you. I am going to say a name, and I want you to tell me the other name that goes with that. We're talking about friends, and these people are some of the best friends that we know of. So if I were to say Mario, who's his best friend? That's right, Luigi. Now if I said Bert, who do you think of? What name goes with Bert? Ernie, right, Bert and Ernie. I mean, that's a classic dynamic duo. Now, if I said Buzz, right, Buzz and Woody, Buzz and Woody. Now, there's a dynamic duo in the Bible. There's actually a lot that we're gonna be looking at for these next couple of weeks. But if you had to guess, what would be the first thing that comes to your mind? Two best friends in the Bible. I'll give you a hint. They're in the Old Testament. If I were to say words like king and arrow, nothing's ringing a bell. David and Jonathan are who we're talking about. David and Jonathan, they were best friends. Now, David and Jonathan had someone in common. Do do you know who they had in common? It was a person that they both knew. His name was Saul. See, King Saul was Jonathan's dad and Jonathan was David's best friend. Now, David was in Saul's army. See, this is the same David that defeated Goliath, and now he's a high-ranking official in David's army. Throughout this story, he just keeps climbing up and up the ranks. Now, the issue here was that Saul was looking for his successor, right? Saul was looking for who would take his place once he wasn't king. And if Jonathan is Saul's son, then who do you think should take Saul's place? Jonathan, right? That's not the case. David is actually the next in line for the throne. Now, who do you think would be most upset about this? Jonathan, right? I mean, David was taking his throne. But in fact, Saul was the most upset about this. I mean, Saul was upset that David would become king instead of his son, Jonathan. I mean, do you think I'm exaggerating Saul's jealousy? It actually got so bad that one day Saul told his son, Jonathan, and his attendants to kill David. Now, what was the problem with asking Jonathan to do that? Saul was asking Jonathan to kill his best friend. Jonathan was going to put his own neck on the line to warn David and to also talk to his father and maybe try to talk him down a little bit. And it worked, but not for long. So Saul's jealousy kicks back in and he's back at it again. He even tried to throw a spear at David while David was playing the harp. I mean, David's chilling, playing the harp and the spear flies by. I mean, Saul was out of control. So Jonathan, and David come up with a plan because David comes to Jonathan and he says this, it's from 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse one. What have I done, David said? What crime have I committed? I haven't done anything to harm your father, so why is he trying to kill me? See, Jonathan's plan was for David to go and hide in a field instead of showing up at the king's feast. Jonathan would then explain why David wasn't there and. It would then be all about King Saul's reaction. That was kind of the kicker here. This is what David said. Your father might say, that's all right. If he does it, if he does, it will mean I'm safe. But he might become very angry. And if he does, you can be sure he's made up his mind to harm me. So this is exactly what they did. The king didn't really think much of David not being at the feast the first day. But when David's place was empty again the next day Saul asked where David was. Remember, this was all part of the plan. And when Saul found out, he reacted. Check it out. Saul became very angry with Jonathan. He said to him, you're an evil son. You refuse to obey me. 
I know that you are on the side of Jesse's son. You should be ashamed of that. And your mother should be ashamed of having a son like you. Ooh, those are some harsh words. If the choices are angry and not angry, I'm gonna think Saul's pretty angry, right? Saul threw his spear at Jonathan to kill him. Then Jonathan knew his father wanted to kill David. I mean, has anybody considered taking the spears away from this guy? At this point, Jonathan ran out, and the next day he went out into the field where David was. And this is where I said arrows earlier. This is where arrows come in. So they had arranged a sign. Jonathan would pretend to take target practice with a young boy. If he shot the arrows to one side of the stone and said to the boy, the arrows are on this side of you, then David was safe. But if Jonathan shot the arrows and told the boy, the area arrows are far beyond you, then David needed to go far away because his life was in danger. So Jonathan shot the arrows and the boy went after them. And this is what he said. The boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen. Then Jonathan shouted to him, the arrow went far beyond you, didn't it? He continued, hurry up, run fast, don't stop. The boy picked up the arrow and returned to his master. So Jonathan's message was received loud and clear by David. They said goodbye and to one another with tears and David was able to escape with his life unharmed by Saul. Jonathan's actions had saved David's life and David would certainly never forget it. Years later, David would return the favor in an amazing way too by showing incredible kindness to Jonathan's family. You can really see how important David was to Jonathan. I mean, Jonathan went out and disobeyed his father and put his own life in harm's way just to save David. I mean, that is a true friend. So our key question for this week is, how can you show your friends that they're important? Maybe you have a friend who has gone above and beyond to show you that they care about you. How do you show them that you appreciate that? I mean, you may not be able to offer them royal coats and belts to give away, but, but you have time that you can spend with them or a listening ear to offer them. So think about that this week. Show your friends that you appreciate you. And we'll see you guys next time.